hello and welcome to this month's Curator's Pick video. Today we're going to talk about a particular sculptor or artist and that was Leonard Volk. And I've become interested in him and you'll learn why in a little bit. But here's a picture of Leonard Volk, a well-known sculptor, lived quite a bit of his career in Chicago, but he was born in New York State, but then at the age of 16, he started learning marble cutting uh, with his father and brothers in Massachusetts. But then as a young man, he uh, ended up training as an artist, then moved to St. Louis, where he met his wife, who happened to be the niece of Stephen Douglas. And uh, Stephen was, uh, of course, very supportive of his niece's husband and actually paid uh, his way over to Europe to study. He first settled with his wife in Galena, Illinois, then down to St. Louis, and then ended up in Rock Island, Illinois, right next door to where we're at here in Moline. And he worked with his brother with Volk's Rock Island Marble Works. So he had all that ability uh, as an artist, and probably one of his first subjects that he sculpted was Stephen Douglas. And uh, Stephen Douglas's major opponent at the time, Abraham Lincoln, uh, saw the sculpture and they arranged to have Volk also sculpt Abraham Lincoln. This is probably his uh, most, one of his most famous pieces uh, is uh, Abraham Lincoln prior to him become president of the United States, because he doesn't have a beard yet. The other thing that he is especially known for related to Lincoln is the life mask that he did of Lincoln and the life, the life hands. Now, a copy of these hands and the Lincoln life mask uh, you can find uh, copies of those in about every small historical society in the state of Illinois. Uh, in fact, the Rock Island County Historical Society, uh, right across the street from the Dear Wyman House, they have a set, a copy set of those. So he was quite well known for those. But why am I interested in Volk? Well, I like Lincoln history, of course, but it's because of that statue just behind me of John Deere. We know that it was carved by Leonard Volk. Now, his Stephen Douglas and Abraham Lincoln pieces were done uh, just before 1860. Our piece was much later in his career. So let's take a closer look at it. So here we are with the statue of John Deere. Uh, typical, looks very similar in style to that Abraham Lincoln uh, statue or bust uh, with the uh, look of the Roman uh, dress and the Roman hairstyle. Abraham Lincoln and John Deere, neither one had the Roman hairstyle and never wore a toga. But uh, that period, that was very common to dress uh, the statue in what was considered the smartest men of the past, the Romans. So that's why you see that Roman statue so often, uh, including there's one of George Washington, not by Volk, uh, and many others, all with that Roman look. But it's a wonderful statue of John Deere. 
we know that Volk was the artist because of this inscription right on the back. L.W. Volk, sculptor, 1884. So Lincoln and Stephen Douglas were done late 1850s, and John Deere was done 1884. So if this statue was done in 1884, it's uh, almost 25 years after his initial uh, foray into sculpting with Stephen Douglas and Abraham Lincoln. Um, 1884 is also interesting because it's just two years before John Deere died. And so this statue we know has been sitting here in this exact same spot in the library since at least 1900. Uh, the Dear Wyman House and the library was built in 1872. So uh, we know the statue came in between 1884 and 1900 because of this historic photo that you see here that shows the library with the statue in the same spot. We have cleaned the statue periodically using Q-tips and um, distilled water. Uh, we have to really get into John's ears because that's where the dirt tends to collect and in the folds of, of his toga. But it's a beautiful statue and this is why I became interested in Leonard Volk a very interesting artist uh, back in the late 1800s. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <music>